Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. The High Mile 2009 Duramax is back. This is the one where we um, fixed that battery terminal for no crank condition and also adjusted the low pressure um, aftermarket fuel pump. Uh, the guy said it drives great. It's been uh, almost half a year, so that's, that's good. Uh, now he has some lighting problems on the utility bed and also some door lock issues. So let's start with the door locks. He said that on the driver's side, the lock button works. So, you know, that works. But the unlock does not. And on our scan data, if we push lock, you'll see right there, door lock switch active but unlock does not do anything. On the passenger side, neither side of the switch does anything at all. What's the quickest way to determine what the problem is? Could be the switch itself, wiring, or the BCM, which controls the system. Um, pull up a wiring diagram. Now in this case, you wanna make sure that you have the right RPO codes, which are in the glove box, right here on this label. So I looked up the right RPO codes. Here's the diagram. Here's our switches, driver's side and passenger side. So what's the quickest way you can do a bypass test on this system? <clears throat> so you can see that the switches just ground these control wires, pink and black for lock, orange and black for unlock. So let's take our test light, connect it to battery negative through this power probe cigarette lighter adapter, test light works. And let's th just touch these wires. So for uh, pink, if we touch that with our grounded test light, we should get a lock command. And we do. Now the orange wire should be unlock. That works. So once again, lock. And unlock. Awesome. So we just proved that everything to the switches is good. We can do the same for the passenger side. There's these light blue and blue wires, so let's do one at a time. So that's unlock, and that's lock. Sweet. So the switches are bad. <laughs> now this one has a Dorman stamp on it. And this one I think is still original. Made in Japan. Wow. So the Dorman switch is actually performing better right now than the OEM Japanese switch. But let's tear the switch apart. Maybe there's some crusties in there. Some solder joints, whatever. Try to fix it, no parts required if we can. So first up is the Dorman switch. It actually pops apart pretty easy. And yeah, there's some there's some crusties on here. We can clean off this board and reflow the solder for these um, contacts here, but there's not much to it. It's just two contact pads and they actually just link these uh, pins to ground. So these are the control pins and then those are the ground pins. So we just clean off the board and see what happens. I ran out of deoxit so we're going to have to go back to WD-40 here. <laughs> Okay, let's get our soldering iron warmed up. This thing is so awesome. Check it out on the Amazon store. It heats up instantly, shows you the temperature. Perfect for field, field work, field repairs. So 
So we're just going to reflow each. I think it's all we need. Pop it back together and try it on the truck. All right, moment of truth, switch is plugged in. Lock works. Unlock does not work. <laughs> oh man. Dang. So we can do a bypass test on the board itself. So here's the lock with the test light. Here's the unlock. Nothing. But if we touch the pin, unlock pin works, but it doesn't work here. It looks like there might be a little scratch or something that happened to the actual trace right here. Because if you poke through, That's active, but on this side, it's not. So it, it's a trace fault. <laughs> so we could just scrape that and put a little dab of solder there. That'll fix the switch. As you can see, I scraped both sides of that brake. So we see copper. And we just got to fuse some solder to it. Let's see if this works. All right, so I bridged that gap. Let's put it on the truck. It should work just fine. All right, here we go with the test light. Let's unlock. That's lock. Sweet. Put the buttons back on, see if it works. Here we go. Unlock. Lock. Unlock. Unlock. Lock. Sweet. No parts required. Ooh, this one's looking pretty nasty inside. Probably some water intrusion. Let's clean it up. <laughs> See if we can salvage this one. I have my doubts. So we're done with the door locks for now. That works. Sweet. In the passenger side, the unlock actually works if you push it hard. So, it'll need a new switch there. But the driver's side works, so. I think customer will be happy about that. On to the trailer brake, service trailer brake system. We've got that warning message. We've got two codes here in the trailer brake control module, TBCM. 1112, trailer brake control relay low control circuit, and then the 19, trailer brake control relay feedback circuit. Now, wiring diagram. This thing has a trailer brake control module and then a trailer brake control relay. So this is like a separate six pin unit under the, uh, under the truck. So it's fussing about this little guy. So let's do a visual inspection first. Um, see where that goes. And also the turn signals in the back and the brake lights do not work. left turn signal is here. So these main lights don't work. Tail lights or brake lights. One of their works. Uh, first thing I notice here in the trailer wiring there is a broken wire. It looks like a main positive got the green crusties on it. So there's a little module right here that distributes um, power to the tail lights. And then under the truck, 
we have trailer brake control modules right here and this is our trailer uh, that relay the six pin so this box is fussing about this box but let's uh, let's reconnect this red wire just temporarily and see if anything comes back to life because that's an obvious problem so I'm just gonna quick and dirty put a fused jumper right here see what happens we'll definitely solder this up let's put a fuse from here to here okay see if anything came back probably not See if we clear DTCs. Yes. Okay. No trouble code system normal. Let's see, let's uh, shut her down. So it's still there. So the 112 came back right away. Okay. So that positive wire I think was just uh, one of the seven pins there on the big trailer connector. So we're definitely not done. Let's uh, take this connector off and at least check the power in the ground. That's gonna be red and black and black. <laughs> well, I got these lights working. Both these filaments are burned out, tail and turn. On this one, the turn was burned out, but the tail, the wire corroded in two places, so I have to, we're just jumping it for now, we'll fix that up. But that has nothing to do with the trailer brake faults, but the guy still wants it fixed. Okay, so let's diagnose these trailer brake module control faults having to do with the trailer brake control relay. So, on service info, it's actually a pretty good code uh, troubleshooting description for the C1112 code. Let me give you a chart. <clears throat> There's six pins on the relay, and you know each pin, whatever the problem is, that's the code that it'll set. So we had the 112 and the 119 stored in memory. So it could be any one of these faults here. And in the actual circuit system and testing, uh, very good description. They tell you to use a test light um, right here. Battery positive circuit terminal. Uh, we can check the ground right away. We don't need to worry about this resistance spec. That's uh, just use a test light for that too. And then terminal E, it can't be shorted to ground or positive. So here's all the terminals, and I wrote down what each pin should be. So A is 3 to 4 volts, B is ground, C is 3 to 4 volts, D is less than 1 volt, E can't be shorted, and F is battery positive. So let's go and check these pins on the truck and see if we need a new trailer brake control relay. Well, I took off the trailer brake control relay and wah, wah, wah. See that? yellow and black wire is corroded off and the yellow and black wire is pin E which is the enable circuit and that's the one that can't be shorted to power or ground <laughs> so I think we just have to fix that and clear the codes so I got the pin out of the connector here's what's left of it just green green crusties <laughs> what we want to do is still save the weather pack and solder in a small pigtail and then solder that to the remaining wire on the truck harness. So let's try to clean this up and make it work. Alright so here's the pigtail put the weather pack right back on it so all we need to do is fire up our soldering iron and just solder the wire to the pin and I think 
uh, that will be the easiest and most effective solution here without going uh, to too much trouble now plug everything in make sure we don't have any codes left this looks like the reason he had that warning message so let's um You want to make sure your part gets hot enough to flow. All that solder through. I think that's good enough. Beautiful. Let's pop this in and we'll strip back a little bit of the pigtail. Put some shrink wrap on it, should be perfect. Alright, so let's slide that connector in. So the pin faces this way. Clip, sweet. And then we just want to solder the yellow wire to the little pigtail. Soldering irons. Should be hot and ready. And even though it's windy here, it's not a problem. For the uh, TS100. pretty good all right I'm gonna finish this off with a little pro shrink wrap this has the epoxy in it so we won't have any issues with that water intrusion in the future and this torch is really nice compared to a big lighter that's awesome. It's all sealed up. Let's plug in the module and see what the truck says. So just to verify, let's use a test light connected to battery ground. Make sure we have power at the module. Yes, we do. Test light connected to battery positive now. Make sure we have a good ground. That's that black wire. Yes, we sure do. And then the four other pins. Pin E, so A, B, C, D, E, F, E is the one we fixed. Let's try short to ground test, not short to ground, short to power test, not short to power, that's good. Now let's get our voltmeter. that voltage there. We just verify that it works. Here's a power pin. 14.5 volts. This is the pin E. 9.6. Pin D. 9 see, that's, that's ground. That's pin D. Pin A. Yep, 3.6 volts. Pin C, 3.6 volts. Pin D is supposed to be less than one volt. So it's all good. Plug in our module. Let's 
see what the truck uh, says up there on the cluster. So one thing on this think tool that they could improve is have a vehicle history is each time you have to like uh, yes we have a manual transfer case we have manual air conditioning you have to go through the whole list again instead of jumping right in <clears throat> over 8600 pounds like I don't remember these RPO codes. I don't think we have Z75. We definitely don't have vehicle stability. We do not have, do we have JH7? Let me look in the glove box here. We do have JH7. Actually, let's go back here. Z95, we have Z85, so without Z95, without that, with our JH7, and finally we'll get do the health report. Alright, so full scan of the DTCs. So post repair. Last come with brake control module. Like EBCM. Trailer brake control module. Okay, so let's just clear everything out. Clear DTCs. Yes. And that service trailer brake system should disappear. And almost there. Boom. So let's shut it off. Turn it on. Just have a trip meter. That's it, no more codes. You can rescan it just to be 100%. And that's a fix. So corroded wires <laughs> caused all the problems. One was going to the trailer brake control relay, the enable circuit. So set that 112 code. And then a whole bunch of corroded wires for the burned out bulbs for the trailer lighting. Corroded uh, power lock switches. <laughs> Green crusties, that'll just wreak havoc on your vehicle. But again, no parts required except for a couple bulbs. And thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Post repair scan. Just have those two codes here on BCM and the radio, but trailer brake control module, no faults. Awesome. Let's ship this thing. Here's a data list of what's available in the trailer brake control module. Manual apply switch, so there's a little switch here, you can manually apply the brakes. And you can see that goes to 100%, that's sweet. So their TBCM command duty cycle, it actually knows when the trailer's connected trailer brake control that's disabled right now trailer connection detected no user gain switch so we can 
subtract that is it's pretty cool 